word and you're in for a treat on tonight join me in welcoming and give god honor and glory for none other yogita stacy mohan esquire give god honor and glory as she can. thank you pastor elliot <laughs> thank you dr hepburn to god be the glory I just want to say I feel so good. I am like so blessed and so excited to to minister tonight. I'm just cuz I'm just so excited about what I have to say and I'm so excited about what God is doing. But before that excitement gets out of control, let's take a moment to pray. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. Lord God, we thank you for seeing us and not forgetting about our dreams and our visions, Lord God. Thank you for taking the time, Lord God, to clear up our eyesight, oh God. Thank you for seeing us as worthy, Lord God, of, of entrusting us with the things that you've given us, Lord God with children and with students and with dreams and with visions thank you jesus we give your name glory that we are here tonight lord we thank you for who you are and we feel great because we're in the presence of greatness of a great god we give you all the glory and all the honor we pray that you would use me tonight let it be all of jesus and none of stacy in the name of jesus amen you all may be seated. So we have been preaching about vision. So in keeping with that, we're going to preach about vision again tonight. And I know everyone is probably thinking, what else can we hear about vision? Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Um, because it's God is just, he's never ending. He's the Alpha and the Omega. You can never know enough about vision. You know, I went to school for law. Some people think they know the law, and I went to school for law, and I found out you can never know the law. You know, ask the bar exam people, because they didn't think I knew enough the three times that I took it, and it's just the law. You think, what, you know, uh, what else is there to know about criminal law, about business law, but there's so much more to learn when you're really trying to be educated and when you're really trying to know about something. And I don't have to, I don't have to, you don't have to go there to know this, but I would like you to go there to our scripture. It's Proverbs 29, 18, but everybody should be well familiar with that scripture at this point because we've been saying it so much, but the, the scripture says, without a vision, the people perish, right? And how many people want to perish? You could be honest. If you want to perish, I don't mind if you tell me. At home, if you want to perish, I don't mind if you honestly say, I just want to perish. How many people want to perish? Devin? Anybody? Nobody, right? So if it says without a vision, the people perish, and we don't want to perish, we want to have what? A vision, right? We want to have vision. And then we're like, well, God, I already have a vision. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm in Jump Ministries. I can see I got saved. You preached about vision last week. You preached about vision the other day. You brought somebody. So what is there? But there's obviously something that we're not, that we haven't got yet. Maybe it's something that we did get and we haven't got got. But regardless, it's precious and it's priceless that we're here on tonight and that God is continuously reminding us to chase our visions. Because let me tell you something, not a lot of people in this world are reminding you to chase your visions. People are chasing their own visions and not a lot of people even care about your vision. And that alone should tell you about the heart of this house, the heart of your God, the heart of your leader, that he didn't spend a series on prosperity, which he could do prosperity teaching or about giving, which he could and that wouldn't be wrong, but he's telling you how to chase your vision. And he made it so important that he had all his leaders and had the, and then the minister, even without him knowing, came and preached about that. That's how important your visions are to God. So for the people that think that God just wants you to come here and serve and just, just let go of everything because we're supposed to deny our flesh. We're supposed to die. So God just wants us to die. Come, find your tombstone, sit under your tombstone, and just die. That's a lie. God wants you to live, but he wants us to live through our vision. And he wants us to live in order. So what is a vision, right? So some people know that I have recently began one of the most exciting careers in life, teaching. 
right? And it, it is really, I, I say that, uh, and I'm not even kidding, it really and truly is. Because there's nothing like teaching humans. <laughs> Human beings are the most interesting people. And if you have children or if you don't, and if you've come across them, they are, they are full adults at that age in their mind. So talking to them, and they're just, they're just so interesting. But getting to deposit into them is amazing. So because I'm a teacher, and, but I was a teacher before that. That is my calling. I am going to teach tonight. So welcome. Welcome to class. Everybody is present. Um, so what is a vision? OK, there's two types of vision. There's one that is actual just seeing, right? It's the ability to see, to physically see. And then there's another type of vision that is the ability to imagine, the ability to see forward, which we've been hearing about. How many people were here on Sunday? So we've been hearing about that already. We know what the two types of vision is. We know about foresight and the telescope and the, magnus uh, the magnifying glass and the microscope and the context. We, we, we've heard about all of that. But there's more to vision, right? So there's different levels of vision, OK? How many people in here have 20-20 vision, OK? Clearly, one of us in here doesn't have 20-20 vision, okay? So, 20-20 vision is normal vision. It's when you can see the way that they, it's called a Snell scale, I believe, but the way that you can see, the way that you can tell who has 20-20 vision is they give you like a, the doctor gives you a chart and the numbers get smaller and smaller, uh, the letters get smaller and smaller, and what it does is determines um, how, what you can see from 20 feet away. So that's why it's called 2020, because normal vision, you should, you're supposed to be able to see from 20 feet away what a normal person's vision can see. So as the denominator, you know, your fractions, I told you I'm in school. We are in school tonight. Uh, 20 over 40 is when it gets worse. So you need 2020 vision to be a fighter pilot. You need 20-20 vision to read the stock, to read the newspaper. You need at least 20-40 vision to um, get your driver's license in most states. 20-40 vision, what that means is, instead of being able to see from 20 feet away, somebody has to pull it up halfway for you to be able to see. So what does that mean? The difference is, some of us can see in the future, we can see Dr. Hepburn tells us there's a school and we can see it. And some of us, we have to wait for the school to start having students. We have to wait till we see the building. We have to wait till we have the air conditioning in the school. That's the different levels of vision. And what I want you to ask yourself tonight is what vision do I have? What vision do I want? What vision do I need to get what I want and to get the will of God accomplished? Because there's different levels of vision. Who wants 20-40 vision? I don't, I don't actually know exactly what I have, but I know it's not perfect 20-20 because of my, my physical sight. But as we go on, we're going to talk about physical sight and spiritual sight. Because for me, I prefer spiritual sight, right? So 20-60 vision, if 20-40 is worse than 20-20, 20-60 is worse than 20-40. So I'm sorry, not 2060, 2080. Well, 2060 is worse, but 2080, you can read an alarm clock. Do you know how big the numbers on an alarm clock are? To say you can read an alarm clock is not a great achievement. Don't go around telling everybody you can read an alarm clock, OK? So that's not great vision. That means you have to see it up here to be able to, to, to participate. That means you have to wait till the vision is almost running to be able to participate. That means you participate when they almost don't even need you anymore, OK? When, when you have to see the train moving, you got to see the rewards, and then you participate. That's 2080 vision. What you can do with 2080 vision is you could read an alarm clock. OK, you can't be a fighter pilot. You can't read stocks. You can't read dividends. You can't participate in Wall Street. You can't be a broker without, you know, um, without glasses because you have 20, 80 vision. And then legally blind is, so I'm, I skipped a bunch because I, I don't want us to be here all night, but 2200. And do you know what you can see with 2200? A stop sign. Now, by the time you see a stop sign, you probably needed to stop a long time ago. And how many of us feel like we've been there in the spirit? 
You see the stop sign, but you just should have stopped a long time ago. You should have had 20, 20, at least 2040 vision by now. But you let yourself get to the place of having 2200, and then you wonder how do people get to 2200? Well, now for some people it is, um, it is just natural aging. And for some people, there's, there's, there's other ways that it gets there. Now, what I have is called an astigmatism, okay? It's not necessarily fun. I went to the movies the other night, and I was telling the person at the window, I want to sit in F3, I want us to sit in F3 and F10. And he was looking at me like I was crazy, and I was like, F3 and F10. And then he was like, so you guys want to sit on opposite ends? And then I said, F9 and F10. <laughs> Because I was so confident that, so the way that numbers are made in the computer system is they're made in, um, like Minister Shah would notice in like the graphics, in kind of a square. So all of them pretty much have the same silhouette. So if you can't see details, which is what an astigmatism makes you not be able to see the details, then you can't really tell the difference. So it may not seem like a big deal at the movie theater. But when I'm writing my offering, if I have $500 and I mean to give $300 and I put a $900 on it, I'm in the negative, okay? I can't pay my rent, you know? <laughs> so it, it matters. It matters. That little bit of not being able to see matters. It matters if you're not able to see what the ministry is doing just a little bit. If you see JGN TV and you think, oh, another one. <laughs> Who is going to do this? And you think, oh, that's not a big deal. TV is not really my thing. It's just a little bit messed up. Your vision is just a little bit messed up. And then you hear about JMGC Academy, and you're just like, who's going to come to this school? Where are we going to get children? Where are we going to get a building? And then, you know, your vision is just still a little bit messed up. But a little bit and a little bit is getting worse and worse. And let me tell you something about an astigmatism. So my doctor told me, okay, these are actually old glasses. Um, I lost my new glasses. They have a, a stronger prescription. And my doctor told me when I went that, okay, so without my glasses, I can see. Okay, my new glasses are cuter. So I stopped wearing my old glasses. I, I don't like wearing these. I feel like my name is like Martha, okay? But so I stopped wearing them because when I put on my new glasses, my stepfather never gives compliments. He was like, you look so pretty. And I was wearing them glasses all the time, okay? And then when I lost them, I didn't want to wear them anymore, but they're my right prescription. So I went to my doctor and, um, you know, I was asking, can I wear both? This is when I had them. And they were basically, my ophthalmologist was basically telling me, you, even if you take your glasses off, because I'm not blind without my glasses, it's just for reading. And I was like, well, can I do this without them? She was like, well, you shouldn't because you're straining your eyes. What you think is normal vision, when you have an astigmatism or any type of um, vision impairment, you're actually making the nerves in your eye work harder to see what is normal than everybody else. So when your vision is like that and you're not, your uh, lens are supposed to be correcting. And when you're not correcting, you don't know, you think it's normal vision, but you're actually making your eyes worse. Which is why wearing these, I, I legit have noticed that my eyes have gotten worse. You know, I was telling the man, F3 and F10, like what are you waiting for? And he was just looking at me like I was crazy because really and truly I couldn't see the, the little um, gaps in the circle. I mean, I couldn't see the, the circles well enough to know that it was a nine and not a three. But my vision was getting a little bit worse. And I, I, you know, I am wearing my old glasses because I don't have any others. And seeing without them is even worse. But I said that to say, you can get, you, one of the ways that your eyes get bad is not taking care of them. Not wearing your glasses and not taking care of vision impairment when you have it. So when you notice that, you know, you hear about a vision, you hear about JMGC, you hear about JGN, you hear about Bahamas Relief, and the first thought that comes to your mind is who's going to do that? You're noticing that you're not seeing correctly. And when you don't take care of that, it gets worse and worse and worse. And for those people that don't believe me, that's quite all right, because we're going to learn about the most common causes of blindness, okay? <clears throat> so one of the most common causes of blindness is direct injury, okay? So direct injury is like somebody hits you in the eye, okay? So 
You may have had a dream, a vision. You wanted to sing like Sky just sang. Sky, when you first came to jump, did you sing? Did you want to sing? You didn't? Did you want to minister? Okay, did you minister right away? Okay, so that was a direct blow to her vision. That was a direct blow to her eye. And she could have got offended. And then her vision would have got worse. She might not have even be able to see this as a church that she needed anymore. And how many of us that has that happened to? We had some type of vision, whether it's a baby, a husband, you know, a relationship. Um, we envisioned ourselves being closer to Dr. Hepburn. We envisioned ourselves being closer, being more used in the church. We saw ourselves a certain way. I saw myself passing the bar on the first time. That was a blow to my vision. But what happened was when I noticed that I was getting offended, like uh, Prophet Odis would tell me, Stacy, I had a dream about you. I was like, I don't want to hear about my heart. If it has to do with my heart, you've told me already. But he was trying to address my vision problem because it was, it, was, it was starting in my heart. You know, a lot of vision problems aren't even in your eye socket. It can come from something pressing on your head. You can have an aneurysm or a tumor, and it could cause a vision problem. One of the other uh, causes of blindness is untreated eye infection. Someone could come and speak into the vision, speak into what you saw when you came here. You saw a church where you could do anything. You saw a people that could help you get anywhere you wanted to be. You saw something you wanted to be a part of, and somebody came and started to tell you other things that they saw. Well, you know, they don't do this. They don't like this one as much. They don't really let you serve unless you've been there 22 years, you know, which is untrue. If you stay long enough, you'll see that that's a lie. But your vision starts to get infected. And so that can cause blindness. Glaucoma. Glaucoma can be caused by your diet. So what you intake can cause blindness. What you eat, what you feed on, the music you listen to, the TV you watch, the TV I watch, we have to be so careful because we think just getting punched in the eye causes blindness. No, there's so many things going on in this anatomy that can cause blindness. So many things going on in your head and your heart. You can get a sinus infection. I had a sinus infection to the point of where light made me feel like somebody was pounding on my head. I was at work and I turned around and felt like somebody was hitting me on my head because of the sinus infection. Because what a sinus does is it um, it like closes up, clogs by your canals, by your nose. And so it's pressing against where your eyes are. Pressing, pressure, just pressing against it. So it, it affects your vision. It affects how you see in the light. It hurts. It physically hurts. And it's, it has nothing to do with eyes. <laughs> it has nothing to do with eyes itself. So we're thinking, OK, I'm guarding my vision. You know, I have my vision board. We're guarding our vision, but we're not guarding our heart. We're not guarding our mind. We're not guarding our intake. And our vision is getting blurry. And how do you know your vision is getting blurry? You don't want to participate in JGN. You don't want to hear about it no more. You don't want to see somebody else get married. You don't want to hear about another baby shower. Your vision is getting blurry. And it can go from 2020 to 2040 to 2060 to 2080. So all you can see is a stop sign. And if all you can see is a stop sign, it's too late to stop. It's too late to stop. You, you crashed. You missed the intersection. You hit somebody. You damaged them. You damaged yourself. And how many times does that happen? We see the signs of ourselves sliding back. And let me tell you something. I could not preach about it if I have not lived it. I've been here 22 years. You think I haven't seen my vision fade? You think I haven't seen myself sliding back? Like I told you, Prophet Odis, I probably had 11 dreams back to back about my heart. I literally, I'm sorry, Dr. Hepburn, but I literally told him one day, I don't want to hear it. I don't, and, I, and Prophet Odis knows this too. That's why I know he loves me, because he never judged me. I went off on him. I said, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear about my heart. Eventually, I just started broke, broke down crying because I knew it was true. I went to the altar. Because that's where you fix your vision, you know? That's where you fix it. <laughs> but I've lived through it. 
And so I believe, you know, yes, Dr. Hepburn has allowed different people to talk about vision, but I believe it's people who have lived both sides of it. None of us are perfect at our vision. I have glasses on. You know, I still need help. I need help in the spirit. I need help in the spirit. When I was taking that bar, I called Dr. Hepburn two weeks before the bar, right? <laughs> Like, I've never taken it before. <laughs> like, it was my first time. I was so scared again. And I just, my mission, my own, first I, I texted him, because when I don't want to hear no, or I don't want to have to explain to him, I text. He knows. I hide behind my text. Bishop, is it okay if I postpone? Because, because I'm not ready yet. Okay, I've taken a test, and you know, I, I'm legalistic with it. I've taken a test. It said that it forecasted that I wouldn't pass. It doesn't make any sense for me to take it right now. He's going to respond in all caps, absolutely not. And I heard it in the accent. And I said, like, absolutely not to postpone it or absolutely not to take it. I did. I did. I did do that. Because I was like, maybe he's agreeing with me. You know, sometimes you think you sway Bishop with your, you know, like your swaying powers. I really thought I had made my case. I was like, he can't possibly want me to go waste, you know, the church's time. Because I made it all about the church. But he's, and then he texted me back again, absolutely not. And I said, okay, fine. <laughs> right, so my vision has had to be helped, but I, I need glasses in the natural and I need glasses in the spirit. You know what cleans your vision? Like the prophet Dr. Samuel was saying, what cleans your vision is the word, but how can they hear without a preacher? You know, our vision gets tainted and then when our vi we lose our vision, what's so crazy is we stop coming to church. But that's what we need to keep our vision. I, I love drop ministries, okay? And when I first came here, I, I, you know, I fell in love with the family and stuff like that. But over the years, that's not why I come anymore. I love y'all. I love the family. I love everyone that comes. But I don't come here every day for the family. I come here for my eyesight, yeah. for my healing, for my deliverance. I come here for, that's what I come here for. Now I enjoy. I enjoy seeing Christian. <laughs> I enjoy seeing Leah and everyone. I enjoy seeing everyone, you know, talking after church and stuff. I really do. I love giving Mother Diane a hug. I love it. But I come here for my vision because I think, and I literally do think this, I'm like, what if God is... It's like the man at the pool that waited 38 years. And what if he's stirring the pool tonight? I know, I know we all come here and we get our hair done. And then over the years, our hair changes, our this changes, our walk changes. We look a little bit more better and stuff. But there's some things that are still not healed. There's some things about us. There's some parts of our vision that has been bruised and infected that has not been cleaned up yet. And who, what, what is the purpose of pretending that it is? What is, who, who does, what does that do? What, who does that benefit? Really and truly. Like, I didn't know you guys before I came here, so why am I trying to impress you guys now? You know what I'm saying? Like, I left the world trying to impress people. Now I come here and I found somewhere to be helped, and I'm trying to impress people in the hospital. What sense does that make when I could be reaching out, crying out like blind Bartimaeus, like, Jesus, stop for me. There's still a speck in my eye. There's an infection. <laughs> Prophet Odis told me my heart is infected, and that's what I did with it. Yes, I was mad at him. Y'all... <laughs> He survived that. Like, he probably never wanted to tell me about a dream again in my life, in his life, but he did, he did. But, I, like, I, I was so hurt. And the fact that I even responded like that shows that he was right. <laughs> I did have a heart issue, clearly. I was going off like, don't tell me about my heart. It's not my heart. And I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. <laughs> so clearly my heart was infected, but he was, you know, he was touching it and I didn't want it to be touched because at that point what I was telling him was like, I'm trying to fix it. I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this. And sometimes you feel like that. Like God, what else? I was at the altar yesterday. I was praying um, and I was telling God like, God, just give me the shortcut. I just want to get to you. 
You know, I really was like, you know, maybe it's not the right prayer, but sometimes you have to take even the wrong prayer to God. Like, take it to God. Tell him how you really feel. And I was like, Lord, I just want to see you. I honestly just want to get to you. Like, is there a shortcut? Like, Jesus asked, could this cup pass for me? You know, and that was the will of God. So I'm like, Lord, you know, maybe I'm wrong for asking, but is there a shortcut to get to you where I could just see you, where I could just be healed, where I could just see clearly, where I could just not struggle with the things that I struggle with? You know, like where I just don't have to annoy my own self. Sometimes your habits annoy you. You're trying to tell somebody else why you do what you do, and you're tired of hearing yourself say it. You know, and so sometimes it's... You know, I was, I'm saying what causes blindness because I want us to know that there's a cause. There's a cause. There's a reason why we lose vision. You're not a bad person, and you're not untreatable. That's the good thing about uh, vision impairment. It's not untreatable. Even the worst of these is not untreatable. Now, the treatment can sometimes be surgery, and you don't want to be up here getting surgery because you will be getting... It, surgery is different than just allowing God to just change your heart. You know, sometimes surgery could be things getting removed out of your life. If God has to take it out, you know, the Bible says if you're right eye offendee, pluck it out. You pluck it out. It's so, like that sounds harsh, but when God has to take it away, you will be bawling at this altar. Bawling. You know, like, God, please take it away, but don't take it away. Please take it away, but don't take it away. You know, so you don't want to, to let it get to the point of surgery, but it's, there's the, the, the good thing about God, and I thank God for this, this is why I'm a Christian, is because there's always hope to the living. Doesn't matter how bad your vision has gotten, there's hope to the living. So the other causes of blindness are cataracts. Cataracts is when you feel like something is trapped. People say they have a feeling like something is trapped in their eye blocking their vision. And we know what that feels like. You feel like Paul, like you have a thorn in the flesh. I'm doing so good and I'm running and then there's this thing that just want to run alongside of my, don't forget about me, this bad habit, this nasty thing that, keep, don't forget about me, I'm still here with you. I'm like, I thought I got, but no, I'm still here, I'm still here. That's what cataracts is. Yeah. That thing in your vision that, that you feel like, yeah. you ever like look in your eye in the uh, mirror, I mean in the, um, the car mirror, and you, you could see, you feel it, but you can't see it. You don't know what it is you have to deal with. You don't know how to take it out or how to move it, but it's there. It's like, bl and the smallest thing, if you go to the beach and a speck of sand gets in your eye, it feels like a big old rock is in your eye. You can't even blink a, a, a hear, an eyelash. An eyelash that weighs, I don't even know how much it weighs, will feel like a big old piece of straw in your eye if it obstructs your vision. And that's how it feels. You know, we let a lot of things, and I'm not saying this because I'm perfect. I already said that. But, you know, God has been showing me. I was at the altar yesterday praying because God has been showing me, Stacy. If all these words are coming in vision, this is your freedom. This is your time to swim in the freedom, to, to go after it. Not just your law career, not just, you know, relationship or new car, but to go after your freedom. That thing you wanted since you was a little girl, to be free in your mind, to not be envious or jealous or competitive, to not be bitter, to not be easily offended. The thing that you see traveling with you and you started to feel like it's part of you. God is saying, no, you can, you can, you can get rid of that. It's not too late. And I started to feel like that. And I, that's why this word and, you know, even when Dr. Samuel came, I'm like eating it up. I, like I go to the doctor excited. And I really used to be excited to go to my eye doctor. I really did. Because I personally, I'm a person, I like the doctor to tell me what's wrong. I really do. I really do. The only doctor I don't like to go to is the dentist. <laughs> I really don't. But I, even him, I choose to go rather than not go because I want them to diagnose it. You know, I don't want to be around here with really, really bad vision. You know, I, like I've, um, I turned off the light in the children's church. The light is at the back and the door was cracked. So there was a little bit of light and you should have seen the speed I was walking. I was walking like this. 
because I was so afraid to run into anything, and it wasn't even that dark. It was like there was still a glimmer of light, but for me, that amount of darkness was so scary. I don't want to be blind. I don't want to lose my frustrated that you don't know what to do with this emotion, so you start blaming people. I remember when the church used to be like that. It's not even fun anymore. We're not even a family anymore. We don't go on trips anymore. And you start trying to find other reasons because you can't figure out what's in your eye. And you feel it. It's bothering you, but you can't figure out what's wrong in your eye. So you just in our human psyche, this is what we do. We like to find the known when there's an unknown. So when we can't figure it out, we don't want to go to God because we know what he's going to do. He's going to send Prophet Odis to tell you you have a heart issue. <laughs> Something is pressure on your eye. Something is messing with your vision. But we don't, we, we know that. We know that. Like some dreams I don't even want to take to him. Because I'm already like, I know what it means. But I, I do take it to him. But we know what God is going to do. So instead we start blaming other people. And then our vision gets worse and worse and worse. And we are in such a blessed ministry. And I don't... <laughs> I was going to say nobody has to clap, but of course Dr. Hebert's going to agree. But sometimes we agree and we say it because we just want people to hear or, you know, we just want to be nice to the ministry. But we are in a ministry that allows people to sing, allows people to preach. Do you know who I am? Do you know the thoughts that go through my head? Do you know the things that I've done, the things that I've done to people and the thoughts that I've thought? And Dr. Hepburn is letting me preach tonight? Do you know the things that I've struggled with? Now, I'm not condemning myself, of course, by the grace of God, I've overcome that. But we're not in, in just any place. Go to another church. If you don't believe it, you know, if you don't believe my, the, 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 the Caribbean bakery is good, go to another Jamaican restaurant. Sample it. Test it side by side. But even with all the stuff you may see, this is like a place like no other. We have a place next door that Dr. Hepburn is paying for, paying for the same size as here that all of us are paying for. He's paying for that. He could use that to host parties to pay for itself. He could rent it out to another church. He is filling it with donations for the Bahamas. How in the world could you not understand it? Even if you have your issue, we all have our issues with family. You know what I'm saying? Nothing is perfect. But, but how could you not see that there's so much good here? There's so much, there's so much right going on. How could you just let, how could you see yourself getting bitter and not want to run to the altar? Not want to take your glasses off and clean it a little bit, you know? And cleaning it is coming to church. The word, the truth shall set you free. That's what Dr. Samuel said. The truth shall set you free. Sometimes, Dr. Hepburn says, when we travel with him, we act like we've never heard him before. And it's, <laughs> it is the truth. But I, every time I come here, because sometimes it's not that I haven't heard the word before. It's that I need it again. I need to be reminded again because so many other things have come. Like if cataracts is having a thing stuck in your eye, I don't have like half my eye blocked already with so many other things. Because sometimes when you let one thing in, then another thing comes, then you see another thing and then your eye so obstructed. I'm like so excited to come. And I think sometimes people think I'm so excited just because, you know, I love the word because I'm, intel I'm an intellect. I love the word because I was trapped as a child in my mind. I love the world because I felt like I was like a hair away from being a crazy person as a child. You know, I felt like I deserved to be just, just the worst of the worst, like to be cursed. Because I didn't even feel like I deserved the grace and mercy of God when I came here. The things that used to go through my head, I thought they were mine. I thought they were my thoughts. They were my thoughts, but they were, they were assignments sent to me as a child, left home by ourselves with, with our cousins watching pornography. You know? Yeah, like as a little girl, getting addicted to pornography as a little girl to the point of where I came to church to jump Ministries Global Church and I, I couldn't look at a person without seeing them naked. And I couldn't tell anybody about it. Who am I going to tell? Who am 
I gonna tell that to? I already felt crazy when I was little. So I'm now I'm gonna come to the church that I want to accept me and I'm gonna tell them, I'm looking at you guys all and I'm trying to block these thoughts out but they, they keep flashing in my head. I'm gonna tell you guys that so you guys could reject me too? No, I wasn't telling anybody that. But that's why I come, that's why I come. People see me in here so excited, preach Dr. Hepper and preach, and it's not because I love Bishop, I do love Bishop, but I'm like, save me Dr. Hepper and help me Dr. Hepper and heal me Dr. Hepper and clear up my vision. Help me to live Dr. Hepper and rescue me Dr. Hepper. That's what I'm saying when I'm saying preach. I'm saying yes, I'm coming out of the hole, I'm coming out. Preach more, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. That's what I'm saying. I, when he preaches and I can feel the hole getting, I can feel the light, the glimmer of light, and I'm coming, and I'm coming, and I'm coming. That's why I'm like, preach, 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 Bishop. Keep, keep going in the hole. Keep digging me out, keep rescuing me out. It's not a game. It's not a pep rally. I don't want to die. You know how easy it is for those thoughts to come back? You think you've been safe for 22 years and they don't come back? They come back. Yes. They come back, they try every now and again. Like, remember me? Remember me? Remember what you used to think when you were little? You think you got this under control? So I gotta come, I gotta come every day. I gotta come as a leader, as an usher, as preaching, as a teacher. And I gotta come naked to the altar, screaming and crying for Jesus again. Because I can't, I can't go back. I can't be diseased and infected again. I've come too far. The sad part about losing your vision is, for me, is to be healed and to still be walking like you're in the dark. To be in the midst of paradise and can't see it. Do you know when Dr. Herpin asked me to teach, at first I was, I was so excited because I, lo I have, Denise is here. So she could tell you I'm not lying. I used to line the teddy bears up and pass them homework assignments. <laughs> pass them homework assignments because I wanted to teach so bad. Like the kids was, like, I mean, I had them written out and everything. So I was, you know, I guess God was preparing me for now. I would, t and this was before wanting to be a lawyer. I believe my calling is to be a lawyer. I believe God gave me that mind for the kingdom. But this was a passion of mine. And then, um, so Dr. Hepburn asked me to teach, and I told him, you know, I thought about doing it when you said, and he was like, well, why didn't you do it? Because there was a time when I did middle school for Sunday school, and I was so excited about doing middle school, and then when the reality of it hit, those kids were like looking me eye to eye and were just like having an attitude, and I felt horrible. I felt like I was a horrible teacher. So I never wanted to try that again, okay? Because it was about me. You know, I didn't want to be embarrassed. And, but Dr. Hepburn, you know, when he asked me to do it, I did remember that, that, vi that uh, passion. And I was like, you know what, I want to do this. But I mean, I just passed the bar. I just passed the bar. I've been toiling for five years on this bar, and I just passed it. So let's go teach. <laughs> right? But I thank God. I'm just gonna digress here. I thank God that I didn't pass the bar in 2014. Because if I passed the bar in 2014, I would have been with my lawyer friends, like I'm a lawyer now, I'm a lawyer, I don't go to church on Tuesdays or Fridays, maybe on Sundays, I'm telling you the truth. Because I know what I was when I went to Stetson, I started to get there. And I feel like God had to say, whoa, you can't pass the bar yet. You can't do this yet, because there's still some of that world in you. You're not quite ready for what I have. You're ready, but you're not quite ready to grab it all the way. So then I took the bar again. 
and I'm getting all frustrated. But if I had passed it even then, then I could have told them, you know, I didn't pass it the first time because some people don't pass the first time, but I passed it the second time, so I still get to hang out with y'all. I'm still cool like y'all. God let them, God let a whole new class come in, a whole new set of freshmen come in. I'm taking the bar with the, the people that just got admitted to law school. I graduated and taking the bar with the people. So, you know, at that point, what was happening? All my motives were being worked out. I didn't care about hanging out with people, but by the time I passed the bar, I didn't even care. I had, when I passed the bar, I put the whole thing on Facebook about how I didn't pass and everything, because I didn't care no more what people thought about me. I didn't care. All, I, and I, I, I can say this not to sound good, I prayed, I told God, God, I don't even want to be a lawyer anymore. But it wasn't that I didn't want to be a lawyer, I didn't want to be a lawyer for the reasons that I, didn't, that I wanted to before. I didn't want the status, I didn't want the money. Yes, I want money, but that wasn't why I was chasing it. You know what I'm saying? Because really, it's not all that in the beginning. I was like, but God, if you want this for your glory, then do it. For your glory, so that my family could know that your word does not return to you void. So that this church can see this testimony. So, and I, I'm telling you no lie. I'm standing up here today, so I'm not going to lie behind the pulpit. I told God that. I said, God, for you, like, God, you can't just let this, tes this testimony fall to the ground. And he, I believe I passed the bar when it was about him. And I don't regret it. I don't regret it one bit. So I was saying that Dr. Hepburn asked me to be a teacher. And I was like, yes. And he said, pray about it. I was like, yes. I was like, okay, okay, let me pray about it. Yes. <laughs> you know, but because he knows I'm going to say yes. And I said, but he wants to make sure you're counting the cost. You know, you don't go back to him like, you made me be a teacher. <laughs> so, so I, I, but I, I did. I thought, about, I, I thought about it and I said, yes, I'm going to do it. But if I had passed the bar in 2014 and Bishop said, be a teacher, I would have been like, who does that? Who passes the bar to be a teacher? I've finally been accepted. I used to be crazy when I was little. I struggled with all these things. I finally get to be an intellect in society. I finally get to wear a name and have a status and prove to my family that I'm not the reject they thought I was. Now you want me to go be a teacher? But as soon as Bishop said it, I did it because I was, I was, by the grace of God, I was surrendered like, God, you write this story. You, there was a point in time, there was a point in, the, yes, for his glory, there was a point in time where I really was like, God, what are you doing? And then there was a turning point where I said, God, will you write this story? Maybe you want me to pass later. Maybe you want it to be a testimony. And I said to myself, God, if it takes another 10 years, if I, and I didn't want it to take 10 years, because I know Dr. Hepburn didn't want it to take 10 years, but I was like, whatever you do, I'm not. There was times when I said, the, the last time that I failed it, I said, I'm not doing this again. I, was, I remember where I was in my room. I said, God, I'm not doing this again. I, I'm not doing it again. I'm not. And then, no, it wasn't when I failed. It was when I was getting my results this time. I said, if I fail, I'm not doing it again. And as quick as I said that, I said, yes, I am. <laughs> I said, yes, I am. I am going to do it. I said, God, you know I'm going to do it. If I fail, I'm going to get back up. <laughs> like, I wanted to be so, like, courageous and say, I'm not doing this again. But I, I know I'm going to do it again. I know I'm going to trust God again. I know I will. You know, I would have done it till I was 50 if I had to, because for the, for the glory of God. If that's what God gave to me, I believe in his word. I believe in his word. There got to be a test in it. There got to there gotta be a reason in it. There got to be something else. And there was a point where I told him, whatever it is, whatever you're using me to show the world, if you're using me to encourage my family to never give up on their dreams, if you're using me to encourage somebody who's been fighting and fighting and fighting and failing, whatever it is, that story is better than whatever story I had in mind, whatever story I had in life. And I feel like when God get, took it, when it came to that place, I was usable. Then I could be a lawyer for the kingdom. Because honestly, to, between us, I knew I wasn't ready. I knew I wasn't ready at the point because I knew, I knew my motives. And I used to tell God about it. But, you know, sometimes you tell God and you think he's like, okay, since you told me, I'm going to just give it to you. But no, he'll work it out of you. <laughs> he'll be like, I know, I already knew that. I'm working it out of you. Don't worry, I'm not giving it to you yet. And I used to think I surrendered it, and he would just be like, I'm so proud of you. Here you go. But it wasn't like that. He, he worked it right out, and I thank God for it. I thank God for it, because if my right eye offended, I got to pluck it out. And I don't, if I can't pluck it out, I'd rather God just remove it. 
remove all the impure motives. I don't want it. I don't want to be another person. Do you know one of the, hi one of the highest careers of heroin addicts, drug users, alcoholism is lawyers? They gave us a, a two-day presentation, orientation, and they spent like an hour telling us about that. It was so depressing, but they wanted us to know how high of a rate it is that people turn, because when you're dealing with everybody else's problems and people hate you and you're trying to help them, what are you going to do? You're going to go home and drink it away. If you don't have Christ, what are you going to do with that? Somebody's life, somebody's freedom is on your plate, is on your responsibility. What do you do with that? Where do you put that pressure? And that's what people would do. People, were, people had drugs and alcohol on our campus. Yes, they did. Students. As students, they were using. So imagine when they get to be a lawyer. I didn't want to be that type of lawyer. I don't want to be that type of person. I want to be free. I don't want somebody to walk into my office and be able to, to slide something that I'm still dealing with. I want to be free. I want to be free to be used. And God hears that. He hears I want to be free even if I'm not. He hears that. He hears I want to see. You know, um, blind Bartimaeus, when he called out to Jesus, he was physically blind. But they, Jesus stopped for him. And they said, the, he stopped for you, he stopped for you, go. They, they told him to go. And he said, Jesus stopped and said, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, I want to see. That was it. He said, I want to see. He didn't say, I want to be accepted. He did not say, I want to be part of the Christ. I just want to see. And the reason that stood out to me is because sometimes that's all I want. I'm like, God, I just want to see. I don't want to be blind. I don't want to be blocked. I don't want to hate. I don't want to think about the past. I don't want to be unforgiving. I don't want to be bitter. I just want to see God. Like, I just want to see. Like, God, like, I feel like that's me. God, walk over and say, well, I, I know you're blind, but what do you want? What do you want? What do you want me to do for you? And I'm like, God, I just want to see. I don't, I don't want it all. I just want to see. Can you just make me free in where I am? I don't want to be surrounded by riches and blind and bitter and angry. Cancerous. My bones rotting, but I'm surrounded with things and luxury. You know? I'm sure Jonathan could tell us about how that feels. How there's people around with money and things and just drowning. Drowning in it. No, it's like a prison. There's no, there's no peace in it. They can't be free with it. You don't know who's your friend, who's not your friend, what girl really likes you, what they like about you. You don't even get to have a real life. I don't want to be like that. I want to be free. I want to see. I want to see truth for truth. I don't want to see Dr. Hepburn and Lady Hepburn as my enemies. I don't want to see them as taking. I want to see us as a team. And I believe that when you say that and when you tell God that, he hears. He hears above your issues. He hears above your addictions. He hears above whatever is clogging up your, vi your vision. He hears. I wanted to do an example tonight. Um, Sky, did you put the shoes down there? Because, you know, my eyes. Okay. Can you just put them down there? And if somebody could just watch the door. Denise, if you don't mind watching the door. Takeda, if you could come up, please. So... Takeda was actually in my spirit to do this vision before, and Denise is wearing yellow too, that's so funny. And then she came tonight, and she was like, Stacy, you stole my outfit. And I said, she don't know, she just volunteered for my demonstration, but she did. So, Takeda, I want you, that's your dream, my shoes, okay? You can't really have them, but you can go and get them and just come back. What is she going to do with this? <laughs> thank you. Why, well, thank you. These are your dreams and visions God has granted you. Um, Sky, can you put them back down there for me? So, Takeda, I did bring this to blind you. 
but I don't want to mess up your eye makeup, so I'm going to trust you that you're going to keep your eyes closed because you don't have no vision. And now you're going to go get your dreams, and you're going to bring them back to me. Go for it. On your mark, it's like, go. Go, 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 Takeda, go. Go, Takeda, go. Nobody can help her. Not a, not a person. Go. Takeda, it's taking you a long time to get your dreams. Somebody else is going to get them. I don't know where you're going. Takeda, you walked so fast just a minute ago. You don't want them dreams bad enough. Mother Diana, do you feel up to walking to help Takeda? Okay, Quinn, you can help her. Go ahead, Quinn. Let her bump a little bit. Because <laughs> she swears she's going towards the shoes. Okay, Quinn, so you can help her. You can help her pick them up, though. You could direct her. Okay, Takeda, Quinn, you can tell her when she's there. You can talk her to where it is, but you can't do it for her. This is an international gospel recording artist, one of the best rappers in the world. She's getting her visions. Okay, Takeda, without opening your eyes, you can bring them back. Quinn, if she, she may need you. Her CDs are on sale, world. Yes, world renowned. <laughs> Takita. <laughs> Good job. Thank you very much. Everybody give Takita a round of applause. <laughs> You can go ahead. Takeda, was it harder when you, oh, you can stay up here for a little bit. Was it harder when your eyes were closed? Was it easy when your eyes were open? Yes, yes it was. Why was it easy? Because I can see. And how, how did it feel when your eyes were closed, like for real, for real? I felt like I was going straight, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't. And it was scary because you don't know what's in front of you. How did you feel when I said Quinn can help you? I was like, oh, thank God, here's my help. <laughs> How did it feel when she helped you? It was still scary, though, because I had to trust her. Um, and, and, and I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah, it was scary because I, I just, I, honestly, I really don't, didn't, don't trust her to that degree of, of letting her lead my life. See, I, I didn't choose Takeda. The Lord did. But I believe that the Lord is also speaking to you. I believe he's speaking to me, but I believe he's speaking to you like... Me and Takeda have on the same outfit. I almost wasn't going to use her, but then when I saw that, I was like, I know, I believe God wants me to use her. But Takeda, you got your dreams and visions, so there you go. That was another reason why I used her, because I know Takeda is a vision chaser. I know she's a vision chaser. But you don't always have to see your visions for yourself. You don't always have to be the one with clear vision. The centurion saw healing for a sick servant. She couldn't possibly see healing for herself. But he went to a man of a different religion because he, he envisioned her healing. I'm sorry, the serv yeah, the, his healing, the servant's healing. So you don't have to see for yourself. And sometimes we can't see for ourselves. Sometimes lust and perversion and things that trap us, imaginations, bad relationships, 
sometimes disobedience, sometimes a background of witchcraft. We don't even know what lies in our generation. Sometimes it messes with our vision. Sometimes we just can't see for ourselves and we need help. And it's okay. Quinn, were you upset to help Takeda, honestly? No, I was happy to help her. Did you feel like it was a burden to get out of your seat and go help her? No. Were you happy when I said she got her visions and dreams? Yes, I was very happy. So there are people that's happy to help you. There are people like people that want you to chase your vision. They want to help you get there. Sometimes I feel like Dr. Hepburn would have went to law school with me. I feel like he did go to law school with me. I think he feels like he did too because he was there. He was there. Trust me, he was there. He was there. He took every question on that bar exam. He really did. But there are people, people that want you to, to, to get your dreams. They don't want you to get them by yourself. They want you to, they want to help you. But like, I'm so glad Takeda was honest. It's hard to trust them. Takeda was moving like she was about 105. About, and she walks down this aisle all the time. She's familiar with it. She just did it by herself. She has the skill and the capability to walk. She honestly probably could have walked straight. But in her mind, when she couldn't see, she started to get so disoriented. I mean, if you could walk straight in the, in, without uh, anything on you, and then you close your eyes, you could still walk straight. It doesn't take anything to keep your motor, your, your motor skills will still keep you forward, but your mind starts to make you think, wait a minute, and then you go a little bit left, wait a minute, and then you end up in the triers. And Takeda was walking so slow, she probably could have walked a little bit faster, but she was a little scared, and that, I'm not picking on you, that's all of us. <laughs> even when Quinn came to help her, she was still like, I could, I could, even if she didn't tell me, I could see she was second guessing it. You know, like I don't even, and these were just shoes. This is just an example. So when it's our own dreams and visions, even when Dr. Hepburn wants to help us, or Lady Hepburn wants to help us, or even somebody else like Quinn or someone else wants to help us, it's hard, it's hard to trust. But people want to see you get your dreams. They're there to help you. And it's okay. It's okay to let somebody else be your eyesight sometimes. It's okay to say you lead, I'll follow. It's okay to say you know better. You know, when Dr. Hepburn, I started, I was saying that how it was one of my passions to teach. I used to line my teddy bears up. And then when I started teaching, the actuality of it was, hard, was a challenge for me because it wasn't familiar. And when I, I'm so used to being good at certain things, when I'm not good at it, I struggle and I, I, I get overwhelmed by emotion, by fear of failure and things. So I started to, to get so frustrated and I had to remind myself and I got reminded <laughs> that this was a privilege. And then I remembered, Stacey, you wanted to do this. And you know, when Dr. Samuel was here, he said, God will enlarge the vision to fit our vision. And I was like, it's not just law. One of my visions was to teach. That, like, Bishop didn't know that. Probably nobody in this church besides Denise, and I don't even know if Denise remembers. She was probably just annoyed, like, what was I doing in the room? But she don't even probably even know how much I wanted to teach, but I, I, that's one of my heart's desires. God will enlarge and give us a TV station and give us a Bahamas relief because he sees our heart. He will give us a food ministry. He sees the passions that we have. He will allow something to need to be built, Alex, so you could have a place in the ministry. He'll, he'll have a project life that goes to Trinidad, so I'll have a place in the office. He will do those things, and I honestly thought about that. When Project Life went to Trinidad, I was like, God, you're trying to give me a job because I don't know what I would do here. Because <laughs> Shonda pretty much does everything. But there was, I feel like God will, I believe God will create a need just so he can employ you. Just so he can give you something to do. Just so you could have something to do, Isan, he created a Bahamas relief. Just so you could have something to do, so you could have something to give God. So you could have, because none of us want to come in here and just watch everybody doing anything. Sometimes we, f we forget that this is a privilege, that God gave us the abilities. You know, we didn't give ourselves, so we're not really giving anybody anything. <laughs> You know, I see myself on that banner. Sometimes Takeda was out there when I first came in, and I saw myself on the banner. I probably have never seen anything so surreal in my life. I honestly couldn't believe that it said Yogi to Stacey Mohan. I, they told me I screamed, but I don't remember it. I, and I'm not kidding. I really, I was like, what is my name doing on the, 
wall of a church. I really didn't, I couldn't believe it. And there are some times when I'm in here by myself and I see that banner and I just stare and I just put my hands up like, I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. Like, what am I doing up there? Do you know, do you know how many people pass the bar and are in churches and they just probably clap for them or congratulate them? Yes, and I thank God for that. I thank God for that. But when you want to, when there's frustrations that come, you got to look at the good things, the things that are good, the things that we don't deserve. Yes, everybody's like, Stacy passed the bar, so I, I'm, I must deserve my face up there. No, I don't. People pass the bar all the time. And people have failed the bar over and over and passed. Dr. Hepburn decided to honor me. He decided to do that. He decided to let you usher. He decided to let you do the media or do the offering or preach. He, just, he made that decision with his church and God allowed us to do it. He allowed us to do it. <laughs> it's not okay to allow your vision to become bl blurry or to be impaired, and let me tell you why. Because it will start where, it'll start where you don't look at things the same, you don't look at bishop the same, you don't look at this the same. You don't even want to see jump ministries, you don't even want to see the building. You come here and it's just, you're a robot, and it'll start there. And maybe that won't affect you because, you know, you're not born here, so you could always detach yourself from this. But what happens is, you don't realize they're your eyes. Your vision is going blurry. So what vision is and what eyes are is they're a lens they ha through which you see things, which is what the, the, prophet w the, the pastor was saying on Sunday. It's a lens. So just because you see things differently doesn't mean they changed. It didn't start rotting. It didn't start changing. It didn't start getting less nice or less pretty or less inviting. You don't realize, you think because of the way our sight is set up, what we see. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight because we think, we are trained in our human chemistry to think that what we see is real. Even color is not real. Shonda's red blouse, all of the colors are being absorbed except for red. Red is the only color. We were just learning this in science. That's like how I know. Red is the only color that's not being absorbed, so it's bouncing back to us. That's why we see it. So what we see isn't even real. It's just what's going through the lens and being processed. It's what's being processed. So our eyesight isn't the real, the reality of something else. Our eyesight is just our anatomy. It belongs to us. So yes, you saw it differently. You saw them as jealous of you. You saw them as taking. You saw them as changing. You saw them as they don't love Jesus anymore. You saw it. You saw it. You saw it. You really legit, legitimately saw it. But what happens is, if you didn't see it like that before, if you once saw healing, if you once saw leadership, if you once saw a great coach, your eyesight, my eyesight is changing. And what happens is you can detach yourself from here, but you're taking your eyes with you. You're taking your cataracts with you. You're taking your glaucoma with you. You're taking it with you wherever you go. And everything is gonna, you're gonna find something to pick out with everybody. Everybody is going to get on your nerves. Everybody is jealous of you. Everybody wants your stuff. The police officer stops you because you're speeding. He's racist. He got a problem with you. He's picking on you. Everybody, everybody will be your problem because of your sight. If you have cataracts and you can't see, it doesn't change what you're looking at. You take it home with you until you deal with it. I take it home until I deal with it. When I was in law school, if I'm honest, it wasn't, a, it wasn't paradise. The same issues that I had here is the same issues that I had in law school. The same people interaction issues that I dealt with here that I didn't deal with, I dealt with in law school. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. Ask people who. 
If you talk to people who've left the ministry, they'll tell you. And people who leave other ministries crack me up because they come here and they talk about their other ministries and I'm thinking, you're bringing us your cataracts? <laughs> you're bringing us your eye disease? Like, that wasn't them. I don't care how bad of a church it was. If you left there and you're still talking about it, there's something in you. Because if you just didn't agree, you wouldn't be talking about it. You would just leave and move on and wish them well. But the fact that you came to us, you, what you wanted to do was not to tell us about the church. You wanted to tell us what we better not be for you. You wanted to warn us of what's going to make you leave. You wanted to let us, you wanted to give us the uh, disclaimer. If y'all do this to me, so that we dis they disguise it as I left the last church because they were trying to ask for money. Basically what they're saying is y'all better not ask me for money. <laughs> because their eye disease is our problem. When they don't know, that money might have been their release into a new house. Do you know when I started working for the church is when I passed the bar? I have been trying to move to Orlando for what seems like forever. I moved over there temporarily to take the bar. And it, I kept saying, I'm moving to Orlando, moving to Orlando. Do you know when I moved to Orlando, when I started teaching? I start, and I made up in my mind, I already drive here, I was driving here an hour, three times a week, Tuesday, Friday. Sometimes we go to the baptism, people don't even want to drive there. But I was doing it three times a week. By the grace of God, yes, thank you, Jesus. And then, when, and then when Dr. Hepburn asked me to teach, I didn't say, oh my gosh, I got to come here to teach. I got to come here to teach now five days a week at five o'clock in the morning. First of all, I, I thought five o'clock in the morning, you just zoom through traffic. Five o'clock in the morning, one hour traffic becomes one and 45 minute traffic. It is horrible. You are stuck on exit 90 for like 30 minutes in, in, in bumper to bumper. But I was doing that. And when I believe God saw me doing that, he said, okay, now you need to be in Orlando. Now it's not because you want to be here. You need an apartment now because now you're doing something for me. So our dreams, our visions are all wrapped up in us making the vision come to pass. You know, we get all upset and we're trying to do all of these things and complaining and people, you know, they, sometimes people want to complain. Um, like I said, you know, when people come to the church and they're complaining, last church took my money. But me giving is what opened up the bar, opened up my apartment. Me giving my time, surrendering, I, ha I was making more money before and I am, have my own apartment now. I can afford more with less. Ah. Ah. Figure that one out. All you accountants out there, tell me how that's possible. So how you have more with less. So good. And I don't, I'm not poor. I, do I look poor? No. No, God never lets me look like that. Because he won't. He won't. He's, he wants us to step out on the water, but we can't step out on what we can't see. And if we can only see where we could see, we have 2200 vision. It needs to be right here. You need to taste it and see it like Thomas. Show me the holes in your hand. That's not faith. Faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. It's being able to look to the future and say, I don't quite see it, but I've, I've, I've trusted, I've known, I, I know where we're going, I know a little bit, and I trust. So the rest that I can't see, I can see. Do you know imagination and your ability? Because I said there's two types of sight, physical sight and imagination sight. Do you know imagination comes from God? That's a part of you that's creative. God saw that the, the firmament and the earth, I believe, were one. So he wanted to separate them. He said, let there be light. He created light because he, he needed light. He said it, he imagined it, it happened. He spoke it, it happened. He put that in us. Where do you think you, how do you think people invent things? 
something that never existed and somebody just said, I'm going to make a toothpick or I'm going to make this, I'm going I'm to make a Honda Civic, like I'm just going to design it. Where do you think that comes from? If it never existed before, God put that on the inside of us. So when you think you're dreaming about being an accountant, about being a basketball player, that's something that God put. That's a, a baby. That's a seed. That's a little bud that God put on the inside of you. It's not from nowhere. It's not from nowhere. It's, you have to recognize that. Otherwise, you will throw your vision away. You got to grab onto that. My banner wasn't always up there, but I had it in my mind. My banner was in my mind. I used to write, um, one day I will be at the front of the church. Because before I got into law school, I put on my status at Facebook, on my um, biography, um, one of my dreams was to see myself on the stage saying I got into law school. And that that happened, so I updated and I said, one of my dreams is to be on stage saying I passed the bar. And it happened. <laughs> It happened, but I had to see it. I had to see it sometimes when other people didn't see it. Sometimes Bishop probably was tired of telling me, not even tired, but he's doing so many other things. He can't be like, Sky, go to your vision. Odise, go to your vision. Shonda, your vision. Stacy, your vision. Rosie, your... He only has so many hands. So sometimes we have to see it for ourselves. Sometimes we have to see our vision. We have to see how it relates to the whole vision and we have to be mature enough the bible said that um now we see in part but when one that's perfect come we'll see perfectly because maturity brings sight it helps you to see things totally when you've been here for a long time you should be seeing different what you thought was going on before went like Isan now he sees different he sees what the money is used for he's packing it up so he sees different so he trusts more. He wants to invest more. He wants to be in the sound room because he's seeing different. So once we're here and we're maturing, we should be seeing different. We should be wanting to see different. So in closing, I just want to say that vision for me and why I wanted to, why I'm so excited about it is because I believe vision is not what, it's not for me what, I, what it used to be. It's not getting all the stuff getting all the things, getting the car, even getting the apartment. Now it's just being used. And not that I like, want to sound like, who is it, like Marvin Sapp or somebody? It's just use me, the song, whatever. But it's, I really want to be used. That's my most happiest. When I talk to those kids and, and they go from a lower score to a high score, you don't even understand. I feel like Dr. Hepburn. I, I literally get some of the things he tells us in teaching them because I get so excited when I see that their life is changed forever. That math um, concept that they might never have gotten before, they just got. They're going to have it forever. That's what vision is. Vision is when you are doing the will of God, when you're a servant, when it's no longer what you want and what you can get, but how you can be used. That's when you know your vision is clear. And when your vision is clear, I truly believe I'm an example that God is going to take care of all of our heart's desires. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then what? All things will be added unto you. In Jesus' name. <laughs>
It's so good. It's encouraging to have you all here. Keep coming. The race isn't given to who? Neither to the, neither to the strong, but to the one who endured to the end. You're still in the race. Clap your hands for them one more time, y'all. One more time, put your hands together. <laughs> Stacy, so good. Everything you said tonight, I love that the aspect of how you cleared about vision and talk about the cataract, the blunt blow to the eye, and how you broke it down. It was so good, so good. The things that affect our sight and, and, and the, the illustration with Quinn and Takeda was phenomenal. I was so blessed tonight. Lift your hands to heaven, you all. How things blur our vision, how sometimes how tumors and things we have in our body, things we have in our heart could hinder our vision. Father, tonight we thank you for the word. Father, tonight none of us in this room want our visions to die. We want our visions to live. Somebody say, God, in the name of Jesus, anything in me that will hinder my vision, burn it out. Say, God, in the name of Jesus, help me to see clearly. If that's you, take a step forward. God is so amazing. What is God? All right, all right there. What is God? What is God? God is so amazing. You could pull him in, pull him in a little bit, little plumber. God is so amazing. What is God? He is so amazing. Pull him in a little bit. Just pull him into the side. God is amazing. Just work with me. You can, you can get it. Uh, I see. Yeah, Shanda, help him out. <laughs> yeah.